So uh, thank you very much for having me. It's an important milestone, you know, the 10th anniversary of uh, Together for Sustainability. Uh, let me start by congratulating uh, all of you online who participated in the uh, success of building uh, Together for Sustainability and now growing it into what is the leading sustainability group of the chemical sector. I understand originally there were six members and now in total 31 companies are involved. That's uh, very impressive. I think the 10th uh, anniversary comes at a time where the world is facing three critical challenges. Uh, the climate emergency, the loss of nature, and mounting inequality. Uh, my organization, WBCSD, we released Vision 2050, Time to Transform, uh, of which I believe many of you will have received a pre-read. It sets out a shared vision for a world in which more than 9 billion people are able to live well within the planetary boundaries by mid-century. In order to achieve this vision, we need now transformation at scale. And in our opinion, business needs to focus its actions on the areas through which it can lead the system's transformation. In time to transform, we will map how systems transform and lay out a framework to guide business action in the decade ahead. At the heart of that framework, there are nine transformation pathways, actually written as actionable routes for companies to take, covering the areas of business activity that are essential to society. So there's energy pathway, transportation and mobility, living spaces, products and materials, financial products and services, connectivity, health and well-being, water and food. For each of these transformation pathways, we've created sub-visions. And within that, we've created the decade, for the decade ahead, the critical action areas that companies need to now drive into their strategies, their business models, their operations, and eventually create the impact on society that we now all need. One of the pathways, although I would argue they're probably all relevant to the chemical sector, is energy. So for energy, let me give you an example. The vision is a sustainable energy system, providing reliable and affordable net zero carbon energy for all. One of the key transitions that is in there is of course talking about heavy industries as well as heavy duty transport and the need to decarbonize them. So the chemical sector is uniquely positioned to contribute to a low carbon transition due to your low, the, the very complex interactions that you have across many value chains and linkages to almost all other industries. And therefore, I'm glad to see that together for sustainability's commitment uh, for chemical supply chains for a better world as your tagline now goes. And indeed, the industry has a unique position in a multitude, if not all supply chains, to drive that positive impact has the potential to reduce in emissions in its own operations, but also enable emission reductions across all of the economy. Many low carbon technologies will rely on your innovations, whether it's photovoltaic, uh, solar systems, wind turbines, insulations in buildings, electric vehicles, and the list will no doubt be much longer. The sector has an important role to play in enabling the transition to a circular economy with the introduction of bio-based renewable feedstocks, mechanical and chemical recycling, as well as energy recovery. However, the chemical sector itself has also a very high energy demand and is a significant source of industrial greenhouse gas emissions. And while the sector has made significant efficiency improvements, game-changing technologies in feedstock or production processes will be required to meet ambitious climate targets. In this context, WBCSD is strongly committed to soft scope three emission measurement challenges to decarbonize, uh, to the real decarbonization. We all know that companies are well equipped to talk about scope one and two, but scope three is a much harder problem to crack. And therefore in June, we helped launch the Carbon Transparency Partnership aspiring to enable sharing of primary data based on product level carbon emissions along tier N value chains. 
This partnership project brings together businesses and industry-focused initiatives to unlock one of the biggest enablers to reducing greenhouse gas emissions at scale, full transparency on carbon emissions across value chains. And it is great to hear that Together for Sustainability is now a confirmed supporter of the methodology we are working on with this carbon transparency partnership. As this project is aiming to be a consistent methodology to calculate and allocate greenhouse gas emissions across industries and value chains, alignment with other organizations and industry bodies, such as yours, for the chemical industry is crucial for success. Therefore, I'm looking forward to hearing more about the next step in this potential partnership. I want to emphasize, however, that Vision 2050 is not just about engineering our way to a decarbonized world. It also talks about the need for leaders to change their mindsets towards building long-term resilience in supply chains, towards a regenerative approach to business, and ultimately towards reinventing capitalism. The most critical of these three mindset shifts in my mind is that of reinventing capitalism. That shift will ensure that the economic system, our incentives, the global accounting standards, the capital market valuations, will no longer just be based on the financial performance of business, but integrates the impact on planet and people as part of how we define success and eventually determine the enterprise value. To move to a capitalism of true value, as we call it, for all, we need to accelerate uh, the transformations 